All right, guys. Um, so this is international capital flows. And what you see here on the board, um, you see a couple of loanable funds models. So this is our loanable funds market. But now the difference is instead of only having a loanable funds model for one economy, which is what we've done, we've focused on just, we've, we've been doing closed economies, which is everything happening within one country. Now we have loanable funds models for two different countries at the same time. So we have the United States over here, and we have Britain over here. So what that's going to allow us to do is we're going to see how money will flow internationally when we allow that. So if you recall from your loanable funds model, so think back to it, um, what shifts the supply curve? Supply of loanable funds. There's only two things. Changes in private savings behavior. So if people are saving more money, supply of loanable funds shifts to the right. If they're saving less money, then it shifts to the left. The other thing, and this is the thing that we are going to focus on in this unit now, is capital inflows. So when money is flowing into an economy, the supply of loanable funds shifts to the right because there are now more money being saved in that economy to be lent out. On the other hand, when um, capital outflows occur, or negative inflows, however you want to refer to it as, money is flowing out of the country. So people are taking their money from the United States, and instead of saving it here, they're saving it, for instance, in Britain. Money is flowing out of the U.S., so it's going to decrease the supply of loanable funds. Okay? So we're now we're looking at how interest rates, it's not just what the Fed does, and it's not just the United States behavior. So, What's happening here in this example, hopefully you can see the numbers clearly, we have an equilibrium interest rate in the United States of 6%. Okay? In Britain, at the same time, that equilibrium interest rate is 2%. So, if everybody is able to lend their money in different countries, so we have an open economy, and buyers, people borrowing money, they are equally comfortable borrowing from Americans or from British um, investors, we're going to see money flow in one direction. So the question is, which way is money going to flow? Is it going to flow towards the United States with its 6% interest rate, or is it going to flow towards Britain with its 2% interest rate? Here's the bottom line. Remember, supply of loanable funds is represented by savers, by lenders. What type of interest rate do savers and lenders prefer? They prefer a higher interest rate because they are going to get a bigger return for their money. So what that means is, British savers, supply of loanable funds, they are going to send some of their money, instead of having it stay in British banks where it's only earning 2%, they would rather it earn 6%, obviously, right? Money is always going to follow where it can be best allocated, where it can be most profitable, or get the highest rate of return. So what we're going to see is two things happen. Because British investors would rather have uh, their money in American banks, they're going to decrease the supply of loanable funds. It's going to shift to the left over here. So we're going to have a leftward shift in Britain. So we have now S1 and S2. So again, everything here is the same. There's nothing more complicated going on. We're going to hold off on declaring exactly what interest rate we're at. Now what's going to happen in the U.S.? Well, this is capital outflows for Britain, so whatever is flowing out of Britain must be inflowing somewhere else. That's a capital inflow in the United States, so our supply curve is shifting to the right. And again, if everything doesn't match up exactly perfectly, that's okay. It's not in our class. So what's happened here is that the interest rates have changed, and the question is, well, where exactly do they go? And here is the idea. As long as there is a difference between these interest rates, as long as they are not exactly the same, the money will flow back and forth depending on, so British investors are going to keep sending their money out until there's no reason to do so anymore. And the only reason or only time that there wouldn't be a reason for them to send their money out anymore is if these two interest rates are equal. So what is going to happen is that they are going to find and meet somewhere in the middle. And so we're going to say 4% in this example. And so what's going to happen, the key thing isn't the number. It's not that it's 4% or 4.1 or exactly in the middle. That's not what matters. We're going to say that it's exactly in the middle in this class and keep this simple. What really matters is that these two interest rates are now equal. So now loanable funds in the US, we have a 4% interest rate and in Britain we have a 4% interest rate. So because we have international capital inflows, these two interest rates are going to converge. Um, they are going to come together 
And the reason for that is, again, investors are going to send their money where it can get the highest return. So if one country has a higher interest rate, that country will receive capital inflows. All right, that's basically it.